Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, I am going to talk about another set of Databricks interview question and this particular video is part 14 in that. So, um, you know, this is a very commonly asked question and in fact, uh, you know, it kind of shows how much understanding you have about the stages and the tasks when it comes to, you know, the Spark jobs. So it is not just for the Databricks, even if you're working with Spark in general, you might get asked the same question. So for example, let's say, you know, a uh, interviewer tells you that you have a data set A, which has 10 partitions and you have a data set B, which has five partitions. Now you try to read the data set A and uh, you try to filter the data set A, then you try to do some kind of a map operation on data set A. After that, you try and read data set B and apply a map transformation on the data set B, right? And after that, you try to join the output from A and the uh, output from data set B, you try to join that and, the, and then you try to apply a filter on the join and then you kind of save the output, right? Then in this whole process, what do you think? How many tasks would be created? How many stages would be created, right? So this is a very, 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 uh, you know, a very nice question, in fact, I must say. So going on to the answers for the uh, going on to the answer for this particular question so if you see right when you try to read a data set you have to go back to the basics right how stages are created why stages are created how tasks are created why tasks are created right so stages are created essentially whenever you have a shuffle operation in that case you will go for a new stage right so when you're trying to read a data set A and you're trying to apply a filter transformation and then you're trying to do a map operation on data set A, then in that case, there is no shuffle involved, right? So all of this can be done in one stage itself, right? You do not need, uh, you know, to have two stages to do that. So one, two and three, right? Reading of the data set, filtering of that data set and map operation on the same data set will give you only one stage over here. And then when you try to read data set B, then you try to apply map transformation in data set B. Now, again, these two operations are also the operations which do not involve any shuffle by themselves, right? So this becomes your stage two. And when you try to do a join, right? This is where our, so, you know, shuffle is involved, right? When you try to do a join and when you try to do filter on the joint data set and you save the output, all of these three tasks can come in another stage, right? So if you, if I say that correctly, so one, two, and three, these three steps goes, go to one, one stage, four and five go to one stage, six, seven, eight go to one stage, right? So total, how many stages are created? Total three stages are created out of it right and then coming on to the party uh, the tasks right how many tasks are created within the each stage so you already know that the tasks are created within the stage if you would have been watching my previous video on the spark architecture this is one of the reason i explained spark architecture right if you have not watched the uh, playlist i do recommend watching it for a very better understanding now within each stage you have tasks right and these tasks actually depend on the partitions right so when your data set a has 10 partition and your data set b has five partitions and i create stage one from one two and three step right read data set a filter data set a map transformation on map operation on data set a these three go to one stage and now your data set itself has 10 partitions so it means that even the tasks that will be created will be 10 right your partitions are usually num equal to your number of uh, partitions your tasks are usually equal to number of partitions i will explain a little more in detail here and then when it comes to the data set b right now data set b has five partitions correct now when the data set b has five partitions now your stage two which involves reading of the data set b and applying a map operation on data set B will also have your five tasks within it, right? And then comes the join operation. Now the join will involve shuffle, right? Although there is a case when join does not involve shuffle, but usually we consider that joins will uh, involve shuffle. Now six, seven, eight goes to stage three. Join uh, here 
you know data set a and data set b are getting joined now the output number of tasks from this join depends on the default number of shuffle partitions so if the number of shuffle partitions a default number of shuffle partition in spark is equal to 200 right now so based on that by default when the join operation is done this stage itself will have 200 tasks created right now it also depends on the number of shuffle partitions if you have set by default it is 200 but if you have set it to some other number let's say you have said that my default number of shuffle partition should be equal to 10 then after this join operation basically 10 part uh, you, so basically 10 tasks will be created over here this is how we actually do it but remember one thing over here i have said you know that stage one which involves one two and three operation in has two to ten tasks right uh, has 10 tasks because it has 10 partition but remember that in few cases what happens is if your data is very small right if your data is like really small then in that case spark will look out for the minimum number of partitions so by default minimum number of partitions in spark is actually two right so and if your data is very less then by default it might create two tasks as well right based on the minimum number of partitions so this is how everything works so i'll just reiterate everything i will reiterate the solution to this problem so essentially when you're reading filtering and mapping on the same data set right on the same data set there is no shuffle involved so you have one stage similarly when you are reading and mapping doing a map operation on the data set b again no shuffle is involved that becomes stage two right similarly map join filter and save this involves shuffle and this become another stage right now you have three stages created and the number of tasks in the stage depends on the number of partition now for data set a already 10 partitions are given right it means that 10 tasks will be created maximum and minimum if your data is very less then spark will look out for minimum number of partitions in the uh, it will look out for the minimum number of partition and by default the minimum number of partition value is 2 right in that case data set a can have two tasks as well similarly for stage 2 data set b has five partitions so now in that case uh, you know uh, five tasks will be created similarly in the say stage three it is a join operation it involves shuffle and the default number of partitions set by spark is 200 right so that is why you know your 200 uh, tasks will be created until or unless you specify the default number of shuffle partitions so this is you know the gist to this particular question if you want detailed explanation i have this whole databricks you know series where i've explained about the you know databricks architecture your stages your tasks you know and multiple other things right so thank you so much for being till here and do remember to like subscribe and share my channel and thank you so much for being till here